Greetings, everyone. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, can you put a plus in the chat, please? Okay, today what we're going to be covering is one of my favorite topics, buffer solutions. And buffer solutions is intimately linked with weak acids. So what we're going to do is we'll go through weak acids. First, just recap what weak acids are, and then we'll talk through what buffer solutions are, how to make them, why they're important, and then ultimately how to do calculations on buffer solution type questions. So, can you hear me? If you can hear me, put a plus in the chat. So it was a little bit uh, trigger happy there and went live quite early, about a minute early. It's buffer solutions. It's exciting. Greetings, it's all. Daniel, greetings. Greetings all. Six pluses. Johnny, greetings. I'll take the high as you can hear me. Anyone else? Big pluses, please. Uh, while we're waiting, can you just let me know in the chat if you've done buffer solutions already at school? Um, also, if you enjoy buffer solution calculations, don't be afraid to say you enjoy chemistry. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay. So like I've already been asking, uh, just make sure you're putting a plus in the chat if you can hear me. Briefly touch on it very hard. Okay. The aim today is to try and make sure that we can uh, dominate this topic, okay? Okay, great. So this is typically a topic that people find hard. Uh, can you just put in the chat if you find this topic hard or not? Samina, good plus, thank you. Just put hard if you find it hard, easy if you find it easy. I've got a mock exam paper one on it tomorrow, Daniel. Well, uh, this would be good preparation. Panoi, it's okay, yeah. Sungu hard, not too bad. Johnny mid, I don't think we've even touched this. The last cheeseburger, well, this is good preparation. You go into class and knowing everything about weak acids and buffer solutions. Samina hard, okay, our job today, um, our goal is to make this not hard, i.e. easy. So it's to help you better understand how buffer solutions work, okay? So that's our goal for today's lesson. And just in prep for today's lesson, can you make sure you've got a calculator? You've got a piece of paper, or more than one piece of paper. You've got a pencil ready. And we're ready to engage and absolutely smash this topic, okay? Right. One last thing. At the end of the lesson, like I usually do, I'll just briefly talk to you about my exam preparation course for A-level so that you can decide if it might be a good idea for you. So please stay tuned for that as well. And before we actually get into buffer solutions, can you just let me know which city you are from? And then I'll briefly tell you a little bit about myself. Okay, any Londoners in the house? Daniel London, fantastic. I'm not trying to be too London centric. Manny, fantastic. Birmingham, superb. LF London, the Sungu Birmingham, super. Anyone else? Asia, greetings. Where are you from? Okay, thanks for the participation. Keep on making this interactive. The more interactive it is, the more we get out of it. Panoi, Edge Baston, Brum, fantastic. I hope you are into cricket. Asia, London, London G9, superb. Okay. Z Formula, I'm from Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Greetings. Glad you joined. So, my name's Devin the Batch, I'm sure some of you know that already, and I'm the head of chemistry here at my Ed space. Um, it's a bit cold in this office, hence the sort of Kurt Cobain jumper. It's a blast from past from the 90s. Um, if you can tell me who Kurt Cobain was, you don't win anything, but well done for knowing who Kurt Cobain was. Um, I'm a fully qualified chemistry teacher with over eight years of teaching experience. I'm also a UCL grad, and I graduated with a first class honours degree from UCL. Uh, after my um, singer in Nirvana, fantastic, there you go, Nefertari, N no points, no prizes, but well done for knowing who Kirk Bain is, or was. Um, so after I finished my bachelor's in chemistry at UCL, 
I decided to stay on and I did a PhD, a doctorate in chemistry, in inorganic chemistry and materials. And I did that for about three to four years. And then after that, I stayed on to do postdoctoral research also in inorganic chemistry and materials. Um, and point number four in my previous school, 48% um, of my students got an A star or an A in 2023. That is true. That is a phenomenal statistic, okay? That almost half the cohort got an A star or an A in their final chemistry exams. Put a plus in the chat if you think that's an impressive stat. Yeah, it's, it's pretty impressive, right? This all that is crazy, yes. So with practice, we can make perfect and we can hit those top grades, okay? We can definitely achieve that. Just some rules to follow so we can all enjoy this stream. There is no such thing as a bad question. I really, really mean that. Ask away. If I miss it, just ask it again, okay? I'll try and answer all the questions in the chat if possible. If I miss it, it's just an instant mistake. Just miss the question. Just ask it again politely, please. And I'll try and address it. Okay, there are also moderators in the chat room to help me answer your questions. Okay, so the more you ask, the more you get out of this session. Right. Three, two, one. Let's go. So we're going to start off with weak acids. And yes, before we start off with weak acids, we should know what a strong acid is because it will help us in the definition of what a weak acid is. So in the chat, can you just really briefly tell me what a strong acid is? Really briefly. And let's do it in terms of dissociation. Johnny guessed, yeah, full dissociation, fully ionizes, fully dissociates, slash ionizes. Excellent, everyone, absolutely smashing it. Brilliant. Okay, and this will give some examples there as well. Okay, yeah, let's put those down, why not? E.g., H2SO4. HCl, any more for any more. Don't miss out nitric acid. It's a good one. Okay. What about weak acids then? If a strong acid fully dissociates, what about a weak acid? A weak acid doesn't mean it doesn't squat very much. Um, yeah, absolutely, Nefertari. It only partially dissociates, okay? Only partially dissociates. I'm trying to get my spot up at the moment. So uh, going badly. Okay, yeah, absolutely. So Lusungu, Asya, Johnny, absolutely smashing it. Okay, so the fact that it only partially dissociates, what does that mean? Is the reaction going in one direction or is it reversible? What do we reckon? So therefore, what are the consequences of that? Yep, absolutely, therefore reversible, okay? Good. Now, um, what weak acids might you have come across before? I mean, there's one that we always use, right? It's ethanoic acid. Ethanoic acid is a weak acid. Ethanoic acid is commonly called vinegar. Lovely, delicious. Okay, dilute HNO3 would still be a strong acid or just be a dilute strong acid, okay? So ethanoic acid is the one that most people have heard of. And in today's beginning part of the lesson, we're just going to explore weak acids in a bit more detail. Now, the title says a general expression of a weak acid. So rather than writing down ethanoic acid all the time, we can express weak acids generally as HA. Okay, so weak acid can generally be expressed as HA. And if you dunk that into water, there's going to be some dissociation. Obviously, it's an acid. It's going to liberate or give out some H plus ions. Yeah, I think the dissociations would make it weak in the end, but I'll have to check that out. And you're also going to get out some A minus. So HA is our weak acid. It dissociates to give out H plus ions and A minus ions. Okay, Johnny Guest is jumping the gun a little bit, but yeah, I'm gonna come back to that in just a second, okay? So, if that is our weak acid and it is a reversible reaction and in equilibrium, 
with H plus and A minus ions, what can we write by virtue of the fact that this is an equilibrium reaction? What have we done previously for Kc and Kp? We can write an expression for the acid dissociation constant, okay? So big K here for constant. Lowercase a for the acid dissociation constant. So a stands for the acid dissociation. So Ka stands for the acid dissociation constant, okay? And if we're going to write the acid dissociation constant for this weak acid HA, what is the numerator and denominator going to look like? Okay, so H stands for the fact that there's hydrogen in the acid because all acids contain some amount of hydrogen. And A is the counter ion, the minus ion within that acid, if that makes sense, Johnny. Yeah, so the denominator is going to be, well, let's start from the numerator, okay? So it's going to be a pro the product of the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of A minus ions all over the concentration of HA, which is our weak acid, which was intact, okay? Now, before we move on and try and determine the pH for this, where do you think the position of equilibrium is going to lie? Is it going to be way over to the left-hand side or way over to the right-hand side? Any ideas? Only partially dissociated. So there's a very small amount of H plus and A minus kicking around. All right, well, let's have a look. Let's say we've got shed loads of these, okay? These are your acid, your HA molecules, for example. If only a fraction of them really dissociate, so a small percentage, less than 1% actually dissociate, most of them are intact, right? Most of them over as HA. So the position of the equilibrium is gonna lie way over to the left-hand side, okay? So if we've got shed loads, so lots of HA, so that's your intact acid. You've got enough H plus ions for it to be acidic. So enough H plus ions for the pH to be less than seven, okay? But the equilibrium lies way over to the west, to the left-hand side. So if this uh, denominator term is large, what do you think Ka is going to be? So Ka is typically quite what? Is it? big or small if this denominator term is large? Absolutely, so Ka is pretty small, generally speaking. Pretty small as the equilibrium lies to the left hand side. Okay, yeah, absolutely, is this all correct? Less than one. Now, Johnny actually asked a question. So does it lie on the right hand side for a strong acid? Well, kind of, for a strong acid, it's not even in equilibrium, it pretty much goes to completion, so it's only product and no reactants left over, okay? But yeah, you're, you're kind of right. Okay, before we move on, can we just put a plus in the chat if you're happy with what we've done so far, just so we can move on to the next bit. We'll have a little knowledge checks along the way as well. Yeah, we're doing buffers today. Uh, we are gonna get onto buffers in a bit because if we don't understand weak acids, we won't understand buffers. So there's a reason for just recapping weak acids. Okay, good, let's move on. So how do we actually calculate the pH of a weak acid? There are some assumptions that we need to make, okay? So let's write out our weak acid dissociation constant again. And you know what? Let's do it from a, an actual weak acid. So let's use ethanoic acid, because why not? So CH3COOH is the formula for ethanoic acid. So it is in equilibrium with H plus and the ethanoate ion and the equilibrium is way over to the left-hand side. Now, let's try and work out how to calculate the pH of a weak acid from first principles, and let's figure out what these assumptions are. Now, if you've done Kc and Kp, you should be familiar with an ice table. Can you tell me if you are by putting a plus in the chat if you're happy with ice tables? So you've got your initial, your change, and your equilibrium amount. Okay, super, thank you. 
Cheers, guys. That's great. Okay, so let's say for sake of argument, I have one, I have, can I not pronounce my H's anymore? I have one mole of the ethanoic acid and zero moles of the products to start, okay? Because the reaction hasn't started. I've just got the reactants. Okay, what's my change going to be in terms of X? How much is the ethanoic acid going to go down by when it dissociates? The fact that it goes down, I'll tell you it's a minus value there. In terms of X, that's just going to go down by X, right? And that's going to go up by X. Exactly, Johnny, good. And that's also going to go up by X. And these are pluses here because these are products they are produced, hence the plus sign, okay? So at equilibrium, the value for the new number of moles of ethanoic acid is going to be 1 minus X. And the value for the H plus ion is going to be X. And the value for the ethanoic ion is also going to be X. Now, the fact that this is a weak acid and it's only partial dissociation, is X going to be large or small? What do we reckon? Just fire away in the chat. It's going to be hideously tiny, okay? Hideously tiny. Now, if I weigh 200 kilos and I take a kilo off, approximately I'm still going to weigh 200 kilos, okay? So, if X is really small or very small, what do you think approximation number one is going to be? Or assumption number one? That the concentration of the acid is what? Does it change by much or not? This is small. Very small. Yeah, absolutely, Charlotte. Lusungu. Yeah, absolutely. Brilliant. So can we just make sure we're writing down assumption number one, okay? Yeah, so assumption number one is that the concentration of ethanoic acid at the start is equal to the final ethanoic acid concentration, okay? That is the first approximation, okay? Or the assumption. And what else do you notice? That equilibrium... What can we say about the concentration of H plus and the ethanoic ion? I think everyone's got it already because you're putting it into the chat. So that the concentration of H plus and the counter ion, i.e. A minus, is going to be the same, okay? So assumption number two is that the concentration of H plus is equal to the concentration of A minus, I'm just going to call it in this case. Okay, great. So how does that help us with weak acid calculations? Well, let's write down Ka. So Ka is equal to H plus, in fact, I'm going to use my actual acid to start with, okay? So if they ever ask you to write an expression for Ka, don't just use the general one for HA, use the actual acid in question. So this is H plus CH3 COO minus all over the concentration of the intact ethanoic acid. Well, what can we do to this? How can we change that if these two are equal to each other? We can simply say that Ka is the concentration of H plus squared over the concentration of the intact acid, okay? Brilliant, guys. Well done. So if we wanted to determine the pH, what do we need to do? We need to times both sides by the concentration of the ethanoic acid. So we'll get Ka times the concentration of ethanoic acid, and that's going to be equal to H plus squared. So if I want to just get the H plus ion concentration to get the pH, what do I need to do to get rid of that squared sign? What operation do I need to do to both sides? Yep, square root, excellent. So if I square root this, that just gets rid of that. And then the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to the pH. So that's how we work out the concentrate, sorry, the pH of a weak acid. And you can see it's different to working out the pH of a strong acid. Okay, there are a few more steps. Right. Shall we do an example? Yeah. Let's do an example. All right. Can you determine the pH of the following weak acid solutions? So what are you given here? So you are given the concentration of this weak acid, HOCl. 
And you also know Ka, and look, it's a really small number, and it's got units of moles per decimeter cubed. Where do we start? Before we do any maths, what was the first thing we've been doing in these, in these lessons? We write our chemical equation for the dissociation. Excellent, super. So, HOCl is in equilibrium with H plus and OCl minus. You did that already? Blimey, okay, I'm not as quick. So, step number one, we write that. Step number two, where are we gonna go next? Let's write an expression for Ka. Apologies if this is a bit too straightforward. We'll get into some harder stuff in a bit. Okay, all over HOCl. And let's just have a look at this. This is going to reduce to Ka is equal to H plus squared all over concentration of HOCl. And just have a look. Do we know Ka? Yeah, we do. Do we know any other terms in this expression? Well, we know the concentration of chloric one acid. So what are we gonna do next? Let's sub in. In fact, let's rearrange first. So Ka times HOCl all square rooted is gonna be the concentration of H plus ions. So now let's sub in. Okay. Please make sure you're having a go at this as well. So it's going to be 3.71 times 10 to the minus 8 times 0 0.02. All of that square rooted, and that will give you the hydrogen ion concentration. So let's do this. Got my calculator. 3.71 times 10 to the minus 8 times 0 0.02. Okay, ridiculously small number, square rooted, negative log of that. So I get a hydrogen ion concentration of 2.7, 2 times 10 to the minus 5. So my pH is equal to the negative log of that value, 4.56. I get 4.56, and I think Johnny Guest got 4.56. Can you let me know if you got 4.56 by putting a plus in the chat, please? Okay, just for step number five, just for completeness, I'll say the pH is equal to the negative log of 2.72 times 10 to the minus 5. There'll be some rounding issues as well, but Nefertari, I'll give you 4.57. Okay, so well done. Okay, Oishi, Daniel, Lusungu, I'm like, I hope you know where we've gone wrong, or it could have just been a typo, 4.06. Okay. Let's have a look at another question before we move on to buffers. I think this is the, the last one or the penultimate one. Okay, so we've got hydrocyanic acid and you're given the concentration, but this time you're given not Ka, but pKa. So what are we going to do here? So what, what are we going to do here? Well, we always start at the same place. We're going to write out the acid dissociation, okay? Yes, All right, good. People are on it. Excellent. Great stuff. Okay. Oh, close, close, close. We're... Let's have a look. Sungu, Johnny Guest. Yeah, I think you know what's going on. All right, we start there. Now, before I actually determine what the pH is, I'm going to convert this and I'm going to say this that pKa is equal to the negative log of Ka. Well, if that is true, how do I work out what Ka is? Ka is gonna be 10 to the power of minus pKa, which is equal to Ka. As you can see the similarity to what we've been doing all along, starting with pH, yeah, we're just using the same thing, okay? So, step two, I'm gonna do 10 to the power of minus 9.41, and that's gonna give me Ka, okay? So let's do that. 10 to the power of minus 9.41, bang. Let me know if I'm getting this right. 3.89 times 10 to the minus 10, yay nay, moles per decimeter cubed. Yep, super, lovely, okay. Yeah, just keep track, making sure I'm doing it correctly as well. 
Um, right, then I'm going to write down Ka for the actual acid. So I'm not just shortcutting it. I'm not doing the squared business straight away. I'm going to wait for that because you might get a mark here for actually writing down the acid dissociation constant, okay? And it will be this. Then I can assume that this is H plus squared all over HCN concentration. Then Ka times the concentration of HCN square rooted is going to be the H plus concentration. And let's figure out what the H plus concentration here is. Will it tell you it's a weak acid? Yeah, it will, it will tell you it's a weak acid. But there'll be ones that once you've done the course, you'll just know what's a weak acid and what's not. Okay, so we've worked out Ka. We know the concentration. So if you sub those in, so 3.89 times 10 to the minus 10 times 0 0.25 gives me that. And I have to square root all of that. And I get a very low acid concentration or hydrogen ion concentration of 9.86 times 10 to the minus 6, okay? And then finally, I have to convert that to the pH. It's going to be the negative log of that number. So let's take the negative log of that number. Yeah, it's acidic. And I'm going to say bang on, actually 5.01. 5.01. What do we have to remember when we're quoting these? Always to two decimal places, okay? If I didn't do that before, apologies, you should have said. All right, so you always said about two decimal places, two decimal places. Um, right. Yeah, 2DP, excellent. Right. Do we want more weak acid calculations? Shall we move on to buffers? You let me know. I think we've got this, if I'm being honest. We do got this. So just let me know in the chat. Buffers, let's do buffers. All right, buffers it is. Okay. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about what buffers are. Okay. Now, this is a beautiful little diagram of a buffer system that we all have that is acting right now. Does anybody know what this is a picture of? Right in the chat. Okay, this is a picture of the blood buffer system. So if you do biology, this is the blood buffer system, okay? Does anybody know what pH um, we have in the blood buffer system? So does anybody know the pH of blood is what I'm asking in a really convoluted way? So the blood buffer maintains a blood pH of around... Actually, no, not six. I mean... Yeah, good guess. Why not? It's as good as any other number. Seven is also a good guess. It's around 7.4. So it's slightly alkali. Yeah, random guess. Asya, yeah, you're the closest, 7.3. Uh, Ali, there's a question from Ali. It's a really good question from Ali. Do you recommend using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation? No, I don't. Unless your maths is really, really good and you know exactly what's going on chemically, I wouldn't recommend using the Henderson-Hasselbach equation. But if it works, you go with it. Um, if you don't know what the Henderson-Hasselbach equation is, uh, just ignore what I'm saying, okay? So, and in the blood buffer system, we have a weak acid. So we've got carbonic acid here, and we've got the salt of that weak acid, okay? And that's all a buffer solution is. And this maintains a balance of blood pH 7.4, okay? If your blood gets too acidic, you can get acidic... Uh, ketoacidosis, okay? So your body can go pH too low and could result in death, okay? So it's really important that the blood pH is maintained at 7.4. Okay, so really simply, what is a buffer solution? Well, a buffer solution, let's get this down, please. So a buffer solution resists small changes in pH on addition of acid or alkali. Okay, could they ask you that? Yeah, would you get many marks for it? No, but let's get all the easy marks in the bag, right? Bang. So that's the first sort of point. Point number two, what is a buffer made of? Sort of hinted at it in the 
description here. A buffer consists of a weak acid. So buffers consist of a weak acid and its conjugate base, but I'm not going to use that word after this, i.e. the salt of the weak acid, okay? So it's a two-component system. It consists of the weak acid and the salt of that weak acid. Um, if there's any confusion about when I'm saying the salt of that weak acid, just let me know right now, and we'll just talk about what that is. If not, so for example, the salt of uh, hydrochloric acid would be, if I react it with sodium, would be the sodium salt, i.e. sodium chloride, okay? So what I'm saying is, imagine I have ethanoic acid plus sodium. What am I going to make? I'm going to make the sodium salt of that. Okay, so that would be one of the system, one of the components of a buffer system. Okay, and in, just out of curiosity, what else would I make if I take a metal and react it with a, an acid? What's my other product going to be? Not balanced, by the way, but let's go for it. Bit of key stage three in GCSE revision. Metal plus acid gives you hydrogen. Good. H two gas, not water, not water. It's going to give you H two. Okay, so. I always say this, don't forget key stage three and those word equations that you do from key stage three and GCSC, okay? So let's just nail that now. Okay, how do buffer solutions work? Okay, now, how do they work? This is where you do get marks, um, quite a lot of marks about if you can explain how a buffer solution works using equations. So let's think about what's going on. So we said we need a weak acid. I'm going to just use HA as my weak acid. It doesn't uh, doesn't exist. Um, oh, nice. Somebody saying use mash. Like it. Never heard of it before, but metal plus acid gives you salt plus hydrogen. Correct. I like it. I will use that from now on. Thank you. To add into my chemical arsenal. So we've got a weak acid. My weak acid is going to be HA. Okay. Now the HA dissociates into H plus and A minus. Now, this is not a mute point. Where is the equilibrium going to lie? Left hand side or right hand side? We've done this before. It's going to be way over to the left hand side. And we have got a large amount of HA, okay? And let's annotate this, please. We've got a large a reservoir. I'm going to, should we use the word reservoir? Nice. Large reservoir of HA. So if we take some HA and dunk it into this beaker, what's going to be in this beaker? Not a trick question. Tell me what's going to be in there. Are you going to have HA? If so, how much? Lots or little? Yeah, you're going to have HA. Shed loads of it, actually. Well, aren't you going to have any H+. Plus? What, so no H plus and A minus? Is that what you're saying? So we've only got HA? I might be asking um, misleading questions, but you can be the, the judge of that. Okay, yeah, you'll have both, Neftari. Yeah, absolutely. Johnny Guest, yeah, little of H plus. Okay, you'll have a small amount of H plus. Okay, enough that it is acidic. Okay, and there will be a complementary amount of A minus, okay? Absolutely, good, super. So let's just annotate that with words. So we've got lots of HA. Small amount of H plus, enough that it is acidic, because this is an acidic buffer. So you can get basic buffers, but people hate it when you go through basic buffers because it's never on the spec and it's harder. Okay, and you've got some A minus there, small amount. I think we're on good track so far. Okay, now you don't have a lot of the A minus, but there is something that you can do in order to get a lot of the A minus, okay? Because we need a large reservoir of the A minus as well, and I'll show you why that is in just a second. So, how can we get a lot of A minus? We need to add something else. What do we need to add? We've got the weak acid. 
Yeah, kind of. The conjugate base, yeah, or the salt of the weak acid. So a salt of this weak acid could be something like NaA, yeah? That would be the sodium salt of HA. Okay, now if you take that and you dunk it into water, what's going to happen to that salt? Because it's a metal and a non-metal, what's going to happen? It's not going to stay associated, it's going to do what? So you're literally getting a large amount of this solid, which is NaA. And you add it to that beaker, yeah, it's going to dissolve, break down, split up, words to that effect, and it's going to split up into Na plus and A minus. Well, if all of it splits up, you're not going to have any NaA associated, but what are you adding to this? What are you adding to this beaker now? Like, just ignore the... Na plus because it's not really doing anything. But what is the business end of this? You're adding shed loads of A minus, right? Okay. Uh, it's a it's a solid, so ignore that the volume increase. I mean, it might actually might decrease, but you're adding shed loads of A minus, and those A minuses are coming from the salt of the weak acid. Okay. So if we look back up here, we now have a large reservoir of this. Well, where did that large reservoir come from? Well, that large reservoir of A minus came from the salt of the weak acid, okay? Before we move on, put a plus in the chat if you are happy with what's going on so far, qualitatively. So we're not doing any calculations just yet, but it's really important to visualize what's going on in here, okay? Okay, super, great, brilliant. Good stuff, guys. Great interaction, everyone. Now, let's take this further. Any suggestion on pen color for the next bit? We're just gonna do a bit of explanation. If not, I'm going to go with this light blue. And if you've got any strong views on pen color, tell me now and I'll go for it. Red. Do you want the dark red or the red red? I wish there was a pink. I'm going to go with the lighter red. I'm going to go with the lighter red to start. Oh, you want the red red? We'll go red red later on. Okay, so. I love how... <laughs> I'm sure we're more interactive on pen color. Interesting. So, what happens when we add some H+. Okay. In fact, let's say we add some OH minus ions. So this is scenario number one, and this is where you can get some marks, and this is mostly where people lose marks because they overcomplicate it or don't think about it enough. So let's say I take some NaOH, right? It's a solid. And let's say I dunk that in. The NaOH is going to split up. It's going to split up into Na plus and OH minus. So if I add some OH minus, here it is. What is the OH minus going to react with? Is it going to be the A minus or the HA? What do we reckon? So I'm trying to alter the pH now. I'm trying to make the pH increase, right, by adding a base. Is it going to react with the H plus? Now, Johnny, you're not wrong. And Daniel, you're not wrong. Now, you've said H plus. I agree. However, let's actually say what truly happens. What is there more of? What is the chance, what is the likelihood if this OH minus goes on a random walk that it's going to see this H plus? It's not unlikely, it could happen, right? But what is it more likely to see? It's more likely to see the weak acid because the, statistically there are more HA particles than there are H plus particles, okay? People teach this in different ways. Now, it's actually not going to react with the A minus because these two are negative. And the two negatives aren't going to collide because there's going to be a lot of repulsion there, okay? So this is our base. And it is going to react with the large reservoir of weak acid. Now, the whole thing about buffers is whatever you add, it's only going to react with one of the large reservoirs, which we've got. And we already labeled what the large reservoirs are. So we've got a large reservoir of HA and A-, minus. okay? So if you add a base, it's going to react with a large amount of HA. So let's write an expression or chemical equation for this. So HA plus OH minus, what do we reckon we're going to get? What do you think our two products are going to be? So some of this OH minus is going to react with HA. 
and what are our products going to be? Yeah, water's definitely going to be one, and A minus is going to increase. Boom, lovely. Okay, was that OH minus present for long enough in the beaker to actually alter the pH? No, it wasn't, because as soon as you added the OH minus, our large reservoir of HA meant that all of the OH minus reacted. This was mopped up, mopped up by large reservoir of of HA. Okay, brilliant. Put a plus in the chat if you're happy with that concept and that conceptual leap we just made. And then let's start thinking about what's going to happen if we add H plus, right? Okay, I'm going to go for dark dark now. Okay. So if we add H+, plus, it's only going to react with one of the two things of which we've got a large reservoir. Well, what's it going to react with then? Is it going to react with HA or is it going to react with A-? minus? What do you reckon? So H+, plus that we're adding, is it going to react with the A-? minus? Super, we're smashing this. Goes to HA. Okay. This is buffers in a nutshell. This is buffers in a nutshell. You've got a two component system, a weak acid, sort of a weak acid. Whatever you add, it's only gonna react with one of those two things. That is it, okay? That is it. Okay, before we move on, are you happy with this explanation? And have you ever seen it explained this way before? Just write a few little bits in the chat. I just wanna, just curious. And before we move on, just need to make sure we're securing this knowledge, okay? Qualitatively, understanding what's going on. Okay. Okay, if you think it's helpful, put a plus in the chat. Okay, I can imagine how it's... I'll show you how uh, some other people might explain it. It's not wrong, it's just different, okay? So, what some people might say if I add a OH minus here is, it will get rid of the H plus, and the HA will move from left to right to restore the H plus that was removed. So restoring the pH back to what it was initially, okay? And that's another way of explaining it. It's not wrong, it's just different, okay? But statistically, this is more likely to happen. Just go with whatever works. So we've actually looked at what's happened when we have H plus and OH minus added. So what we're going to do now is some calculations. Okay, right. We've got to determine the pH of a buffer solution. And this is a sort of type one type buffer question, okay? Um, and what do I mean by that? This is sort of easiest buffer question that you will get, okay? So how do we approach this? Well, this is chemistry, not math. So we all, obviously, we're going to approach it from the point of view of writing some dissociations. So dissociation number one of the propanoic acid. Let's write this down. C2H5COO. H is a weak acid. We know that from the Ka. It's going to dissociate into C2H5COO minus plus H plus. Okay, well, what else should we dissociate here? Are we given the sodium salt of that acid? Yes. Should we dissociate that as well? Yes. Okay. C2H5COONA, not a reversible arrow, one direction. This is also going to dissociate into C2H5COO minus plus Na plus. Now, tell me what I should circle. I'm going to use this green color. What do we have large amounts of? We've only got large amounts of two things. What should I circle first? I'm just, I was hovering perhaps over the correct answer, influencing your decisions. So do we have a large amount of this? Yeah, we've got a large amount of the C2H5COO minus, correct, Johnny? And we've got a large amount of the acid, super, okay? Get into the habit of doing that. It's just a visual stimulus of what you've got in that buffer, okay? Super. Well done, Daniel. Everyone is on top form. Let's go for this light blue now. Where do we go next? What could we write for the weak acid? Let's write down Ka. So Ka is equal to the concentration of the propanoate ion 
Oh, yes, Nefertari. All over the concentration of the weak acid. Okay. Now, before we start putting in numbers and we end up like, I don't know, Russell Crowe from A Beautiful Mind. Um, has anyone seen A Beautiful Mind? Decent film, old, about economics professor, I think like the Nash Equilibrium. Anyway, I digress, don't know why I'm talking about that. What, Nefertari, X in Nirvana and A Beautiful Mind. Right, what expression are we trying, what variable are we trying to make the subject here? Well, we know Ka, we know the concentration of the salt, we know the concentration of the acid, so we're trying to get Ha, right? So let's rearrange this for HA. Guys are on fire. So, Ka times the concentration of the acid all over the concentration of the salt of the acid is equal to H plus. Okay. So now, once you rearrange, then you put in the information you know, okay? So, 1.35, and let's do this together. Times the concentration of the acid. What's the concentration of the acid? 0 0.510. All over the concentration of the propanoate ion, which is coming from sodium propanoate, so that's 1.1. Zero, zero, and that's equal to the concentration of H plus. Great question. Faz, how comes for this you don't square it but for the other one you do? Can anybody answer that? Why aren't these two guys equal to each other? They're not equal. Why aren't they equal to each other? Exactly, they're not equal amounts. Why are they not equal amounts? Because this is coming from, we're adding extra amounts of it coming from our salt. So usually if we just had the acid, these guys would be equal, but they're not equal because we're disrupting this by adding some salt. So we're adding extra of this. All of that iron is coming from the salt of the acid. That's why they're not equal, okay? Does that make sense? That's a really good question. Okay, let's continue. So, let's now actually process some values, okay? So, 1.35 times 10 to the minus 5, multiply 0 0.510, all over 1.1. 1 .1. Do you get a 6.26, yeah? So the hydrogen ion concentration is equal to 6.26 times 10 to the minus six, yeah? Okay, and then the pH is gonna be equal to the negative log of that. So the pH is 5.20. Everyone happy with that? Fawaz, Nefertari, super duper. 5.20 is what I got as well, lovely. Asia, excellent. Okay, that's, that's like the, so this is an easy buffers question. What do you think I've got planned next? We could stop there and just say, jobs are good and let's go home. I mean, you're probably at home anyway, but we could do a harder one. Should we do a harder one? Um, yeah, let's do a harder one. Okay, dilution and when one gets used up. Yeah, okay, right. There is a saying which is train hard, fight easy. So let's train hard and fight easy, okay? I'm not gonna go through all the permutation just because we don't have time for all of them, but I've got two more, more difficult questions. So let's go. Um, now, I think the, before we start, I'm gonna go for it's navy, dark blue, royal blue. Um, you should be having a go at this and then I'm gonna do it with you guys as well, okay? So. This is a different question. So we're given the masses here of ethanoic acid and the salt. Okay, so we are increasing the complexity and we're given the volume that our buffer solution is made up of. 
Okay, nice, nice question. So, straight away, I'm gonna work out the molar mass, or the MR, if you will, of CH3COH. I think it's 60, so 12 times two, plus 32 plus four, 60, super. Okay, we're given sodium methanoate, so let's work out the MR of that. So 12 times two, plus three, plus 32, plus 23, I get 82, okay? I'm just getting these numbers down now, so I don't have to think about them later on, okay? So we're just processing. Okay, first step is then, let's work out the number of moles, n for the number of moles of CH3COOH, and that's the mass divided by the molar mass, which is 11.1 .1 over 60, and that gives us, 0.185 mole. Okay, where do we go next? What could I work out? And really, I should have done my dissociation, so I'll do them here. So that dissociates in the ethanoate ion and H plus. Yeah, we could work out a mole of the other one. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Yeah, let's do that. And then we've got shed loads of the ethanoate ion coming from the dissociation of the salt, right? And let's just highlight, we've got a lot of that and you've got a lot of that. Remember, these two are not going to be equal. Okay, let's work out the concentration, actually. Let's work out the concentration. So we're going to work out the concentration of CH3COOH. Okay, so to work out the concentration of something, it is the number of moles n divided by the volume, right? So do we know the number of moles? Yeah. Uh -huh. Do we know the volume? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's in centimeters cubed. So that's going to be 100 over 1000. So I'm just multiplying by 10. So that's going to be 1.85 moles per decimeter cubed. Agreed? Disagree? I think that's right. Okay, so that's step number one, step number two. Now, step number three, let's work out the number of moles of the sodium methanoate, okay? So we've got 3.2. So, so that's going to be, I'm just going to rub that out because that's going to look confusing. Apologies. Right. So that's going to be 3.2 over 82. And that's going to give me the number of moles of the ethanoate ion. It's a one to one. So that's 0 0.039 mole. Okay. Hello, everyone. Okay. Step number four, let's work out the concentration. What do we get? So the concentration is going to be 0 0.039 over the volume which is 100 over 1,000. Well, the salt is this, so this is HA effective. Well, is the salt HA? What do you mean by that? So the salt is A minus. But we're actually saying what the actual salt is, okay? So that's gonna be 0 0.39 moles per decimeter cubed, okay? Now, let's, let's follow this. So let's, where do we, what's the next logical step? Let's write our, exp would you use for HA the carboxylic? I'm not sure I follow just yet, but I'll show you in just a second, okay? So let's write our expression for the carboxylic acid. So it's gonna be H plus, times CH3COO minus all over the concentration of CH3COOH, okay? Now, before we actually do any rearranging, what variables do we know? And I think it'll become clearer here, Johnny. Do we know Ka? Yeah, it's given to us in the question, yeah? Do we know the concentration of the ethanoate ion, i.e. A minus? Yes or no? Yeah, I just worked it out, right? So I know that. Any other variables I know? Do I know the concentration of the acid? The ethanoic acid? Yes or no? Yeah. 
it just worked it out. So these are my variables. Johnny, is that making a little bit more sense? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bung these in. It's just good for orange. Okay. So Ka times the concentration of the weak acid all over the concentration of the salt of the weak acid is equal to H plus. And let's say what the H plus concentration is. I'm running out of space. So I'm just going to imagine I'm putting these numbers in 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 times, is it 1.85? Here? Yeah, 1.85 all over 0 0.39. Take the negative log of that. What do we get? 4.08. Booyah. Yeah, 4.08 as the pH. Okay, super duper. Now, do you see how that was a bit trickier? but it wasn't insurmountable. Like these are the steps that we need to be taking to answer this question. And look how we've laid it out. Number of moles, the concentration, number of moles, the concentration. We write our Ka, we then rearrange for the unknown. Obviously we should be substituting these in. Okay, aha. Now I'm glad somebody has said that, okay? So Pinoy has said, you don't have to find the concentrations. Well, you're using a mathematical trick there. Yeah, because the volumes do cancel out. Correct. However, depends how much you want the marks. Some mark schemes can be really strict and say, if, if the concentration is not given, dock marks. So unless they expli explicitly say in the question. Okay, good. But in the exam, it's better to, it's better to get into the habit of doing it the the proper way, so to speak, so you don't make any mistakes in the exam, which it matters, right? That's the that's game day. You want to be prepared for game day. You want to make sure you're doing your reps properly, so to speak. Okay. Now we've got one more question. It's a bit of a long one. We can do it, or we can um, just say, yeah, this is buffers, and we can talk about the course. Put a plus in the chat if you want one more. It's a harder one now. Because next we're making a buffer in situ. Yeah, let's do it. Super. Right, I can't really see the orange, so I, I have to... I'm not going for yellow either, so let's go dark green. Excellent, everyone. Super. Right, calculate the pH of a buffer solution formed by mixing. Okay, cool. This is a bit trickier. Because what we're saying is we've got a... And it's probably just worth writing down. This is forming a buffer solution. And this is another so it's type three type question. So a buffer solution formed by reacting a weak acid, WA, with a strong base. And you're making a buffer in situ. Yeah, we're making the salt. Super. Okay, cool. So we've got 40 centimeters cubed of the weak acid. And we're adding a strong base. So what we're doing is we're actually making the salt. Okay, so we're making the A minus effectively, or the ethanoate ion. So let's do this. Where would we start with this? Apart from panicking. Let's not panic. Where would we start? Any ideas? Got a weak acid, we're adding a strong base to it. Yeah, find the new concentrations, but before we do any of that, Asya, we start with the equation. Super. So we've got some ethanoic acid. Okay, we could write the dissociation out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're adding OH minus ions. What are we going to form? What are we going to form? We're going to make CH3COO minus. As you can see, we're making that in situ from the reaction. And what else are we going to make? Water. Okay. So let's work out the number of moles first of all. 
So how are we going to work out the number of moles of ethanoic acid that we start with? We are given the volumes and the concentrations. What do we need to do to those two quantities? To multiply those together, so it's a product, so 40 over 1,000 times 0 0.5, okay? So 40 over 1,000 times 0 0.5 gives you 0 0.02. And the reason for that is N is equal to C times V, correct. Good. Now have a look at how I'm laying this out, okay? This is not, I'm not doing this randomly. This is how I would advise you to lay out a question like this. It really helps having a format. Next step is we work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide. So this is gonna be nine over a thousand multiplied by one, which I believe is 0 0.009 mol mol okay do we agree so far okay put a plus if you are happy so far with the chemistry because ah my mistake i thought it was concentration of one no no you're right you're right you're right it's a concentration of 0 0.1 so that should be 0 0.1 there, good spot. Okay, so that should be 0 0.0001 mole. Okay, now we should be happy. Does that work? I think it works. Okay, so when these two react, which one of those is the limiting reactant which is in excess? What do you reckon? Yeah, absolutely, right? This is the limiting reactant. That should be nine as well. Okay. So that is the limiting reactant. That is the reactant which is in excess. I'm just going to use X and S for saying excess. Okay, so what happens when you've got a limiting reactant problem? The limiting reactant and final, so number of moles final is going to be our final little heading, okay? The limiting reactant gets consumed fully. So that's going to go down by how much? Itself, okay? So this is going to go down by... So are you going to have any moles of that left over? No. Zero mole. Okay. Well, what's going to happen to this? We have to take 0 0.0009 away from it. And let's do that. So 9 over 1,000 times 0 0.1. So 0 0.02 take away that number gives you 0 0.0191 mole. Okay. Put a plus if you're happy with that. These are our sort of business end values now okay now we're also making some of this salt well how many moles of salt are we going to make of this what's going to determine the number of moles of the ethanoate ion that we're making is it the excess reactant or the limiting reactant well this is going to go up by 0 0.0009 and there was none of it to begin with right so this is going to be 0 0.0009 mole, okay? So, if we write an expression for Ka, and I'll do that up here. So CH3COO minus H plus all over CH3COOH. Are we getting towards finding out the... Yeah, okay, I haven't finished. I haven't finished yet, okay? So I, I'm just getting there. But we're heading in the right direction to work out the concentrations because we need the concentration of this and we need the concentration of this. So as I've rightly been told in the chat, let's work out these concentrations. So it's going to be 0 0.0191 all over what? You're adding 40 and what? 9 together. So that's going to be 49 over what? 1,000. And what does that give you? So 49 over 1,000. I get a concentration of 0 0.389796, I'm just going to say, okay? Moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, and what do we get as the concentration here? We're going to do 9 times 10 to the minus 4 all over 49 over 1,000. And what do we get? So... 9 times 10 to the minus 4 all over 49 over 1,000. I get 0 
moles per decimeter cubed. Okay, put a plus in the chat if you're happy with what we've done so far. Okay, and now I'm gonna do something I told you not to do. I'm gonna put in the values straight away. And the only reason for that is I'm running out of space here and you'll be seeing working out over my head. So, we know Ka is 1.74 times 10 to the minus five. I'm gonna multiply that, so cross multiply that by the concentration of the acid, which is that value. So that's gonna be 1.74 times 10 to the minus five multiplied by 0 0.389796 all over the concentration of the ethanoate ion, which is 0 0.018. Three six seven, and that is the H plus concentration, and then do the negative log of that value to get the pH. Let's do this: one point seven four times ten to the minus five, times zero point three eight nine seven nine six, all over zero point zero one eight three six seven. Take the negative log of that: three point four three. Happy days. And you now go from saying, I find buffers hard to saying, I actually like buffer calculations because it's a lot of marks. And once you get your eye in and you know what the technique is, you can get all of those marks. Okay, no worries. Can you put a plus in the chat if you found that useful and you now have a better understanding of buffers? And then please stay tuned while I just talk about my course. Okay, brilliant. You've been fantastic. You guys have been on fire tonight. We've done a lot, done weak acids qualitatively describe what buffers are, gone through different types of buffer calculations as well, okay? So, I really appreciate if you stay for the next bit as well, and this is information for those who want it, okay? So, I'm sure you want to get top grades in your exams, okay? So, please listen to this next bit, because I'm sure you're all here, because you want to secure the top grades in your exams. And I can help you get an A star slash A in your A-level chemistry exams, okay? Let's even go by my last cohort, 48% A star A in their exams, phenomenal figures, okay? Now this is stress-free, spending less than five hours a week on extra chemistry classes. Now that's a small investment for a big return, okay? I'm no economist, but that seems to make sense to me. So what's actually included in the course? Well, you get two live classes per week that will take place on YouTube. You get 24-7 mental support. And we've all been in situations where you think, I wish I could just get help really quickly on a problem. I will just delay any anxiety and fears that you have about that problem. And you get this with a mentor. You get professionally designed workbooks. And they look beautiful and they double up as revision notes when it comes to the end of the course, okay? You get a, four, this is the best bit, you get a 14 day money back guarantee for this course. So what we're really saying, there's no risk associated here. You get exam style homeworks with instant feedback after each lesson. In addition to that, you get video solutions. So me, like I'm going through, telling you not only what the correct answer is, but how to get to the correct answer. So just addressing any misconceptions. Are the YouTube lives of free ones like this stream? Yeah, it'll be in part of the package, okay? But they'll take place on YouTube, just like these lessons are taking place on YouTube. And not only that, you get access to a community of more than 40,000 students, and you can ask your peers for help. So if they're like-minded individuals doing chemistry and you're stuck on a question, post question, bang, somebody will probably respond to your request, okay? So like I was saying, to protect you from any risk, we provided a full, 14 day refund guarantee. And what I'm really saying here is no risk. I think that is fantastic. Put a plus in the chat if you like the sound of this being no risk. And I'm just gonna hit you with some key figures, okay? So I'll let the figures do the talking. At the moment, we've got way more than 1300 students currently studying with us. 90% of students recommend my Ed's basement. Why wouldn't you? Uh, we'll get to the cost in just a second, okay? So just bear with me, please. 82% um, of our students got a desired or higher than planned grade. 
<laughs> can you ask me a quick question on kinetics? Um, I'll take uh, requests on TikTok. I'll do a kinetics question on there. If you post a question on my TikTok, I'll answer your kinetics question on there if that's okay. One of my favorite topics, by the way, so I will answer it. Um, and if you have a look on Trustpilot, we've got an average rating of 4.9 out of 5. It's absolutely phenomenal score on Trustpilot, okay, based on the number of reviews that we have. Do I do past papers? Um, I do past papers for fun. I love past papers. I'm not joking. I actually do. Um, and if you don't believe me, go on Trustpilot, have a look at all the reviews, five star, five star, five star. Um, yeah, check those for yourselves, okay? I'm not gonna read all these out to you. So some of you are already putting, uh, am I, will I be doing past papers? Well, that's something, uh, if you request it enough, uh, if you go on TikTok and you put requests for past papers, Oh, good question. What's the difference between me and Taylor tutors? Well, I would say sometimes you don't know what you're getting in a tutor. Um, if you don't know what you're getting in a tutor, you've got uncertainty there, right? They may not have experience with the specification and mark schemes. They might not be, um, they might not have done a lot of past papers as well, even though they know the knowledge. And I'm not really sure what the course layout is for A-levels. And what you're getting here with me is you're getting um, eight years of qualifications as a qualified teacher. So you know, so you're getting a known quantity is what I'm saying, okay? Now, the price of the course is 700 pounds. However, let's just think about what you get for that and stay, stay with me here. You're getting live lessons twice a week plus recordings, professionally designed revision materials, exam style homeworks and instant feedback, a community of like-minded learners, detailed video solutions and 24 seven mental support. It's actually not outrageous because you actually have the opportunity to get 44% off, okay? A whopping discount. Now, the new price will only be 393 pounds. Now, if you work that out to per hours, that works out to £4.90 per hour, which is 10 times cheaper than lessons with private tutors who may or may not know what they're doing, okay? So I think you're onto an absolute bargain if you look at that per hour. And not only that, we can split the price into two equal installments for you. Now this discount will only be valid until midnight on Friday. And what I'd really like, if you like the sound of that course, message on WhatsApp, please, with the code word buffer. So my team knows that you're interested, okay? So in order to get that discount, message on WhatsApp, do that now, please, or ask your parents to do that now. Please do that so my team knows that you are interested. The course will be starting uh, from next week. Okay, if any frequently asked questions, let's just address those. The course is gonna be running up till the exam all the way up to the exam. So, some frequently asked questions. So what if I miss a lesson? No problem. Those are gonna be recorded and uploaded onto our online learning platform and you can just watch it at your leisure. Because who doesn't like watching chemistry videos? Will you get enough attention? Well, hopefully it's been interactive in this live stream just to give you an idea of what it's like. And if I miss any questions with a pro plan, you'll be assigned uh, a personal mentor, which is available 24 seven to answer your questions and assist with homework, or even provide you extra tasks if it's a bit too easy for you and you wanna just test yourself. Um, if as one of my, uh, one of the mods is gonna reach out and tell you how much the two installments will be. Do we have enough time to finish the whole course? Absolutely, absolutely. Where there is a will, there is a way. We just got through a shed load of content today in an hour. So yeah, there is enough time to finish the whole course. So how would you ask for help? In the same way you've been doing, ask questions. So put messages in the direct chat, just like we've been, been doing today. And you know, you're also joining a community and you're gonna be joining a chemistry community for extra support from peers. You're also getting a live assistance during the stream and I'll try and my best to respond on the spot, just like we've been doing today. And a lot of time been calling out questions because they're great questions and somebody probably is thinking the same thing. Okay. Will the lessons be useful? Do we do AS course? It's actually um, an year 13 course, but during that year 13 course, we'll be revisiting lots of AS content, okay? Uh, we're gonna be starting with thermodynamics, so hair cycles to start with, going on to Bourne Harbor Cycles, Entropy, Gibbs, 
all of that sort of stuff and then just taking the course step by step. And like I was saying, 82% of our students achieved or surpassed their goals. We've got a 14 day money back guarantee. So really, what are we waiting for? You've got confidence and you've got no risk uh, offer here as well. Message on WhatsApp, code word buffer. So my team knows that you're interested as well, please. Are there going to be any more free YouTube live streams like this one? I think we've got one more in the schedule as well, okay? So thank you for coming tonight. Pleasure going through buffer calculations with you guys. Um, get onto WhatsApp, join the course, be part of the community. Um, the lessons are gonna be Tuesdays and Thursdays. So thank you very much. If you've got any questions, ask them now. If not, have a good evening and ta-ta for now. See you later. Cheers, Daniel. Really, really appreciate that. See you guys later. Ta-ta.